Now, many of you may remember just not too long ago when people from Canonical made the big announcement that they were going to replace not just one or two of the GNU core utilities, but the vast majority of all GNU core utilities, those important terminal tools, you know, things like kill and sudo and LS and various other tools. They were going to replace so many of those tools with rust based equivalents, not, not just rust based equivalents programmed in the old oh, magical, glorious, holy rust based rust programming language, but for the most part, untested rust based equivalents of those GNU core utils, ones that had been in use for 20, 30, going on 40 years in some cases. Now, the engineering managers and, and PMs and just general devs among you, any of you who have more than what I like to call a few months worth of work experience in the software industry are immediately going, wait a minute, red flag. You telling me you're going to take working software that nobody is having problems with, no bugs, no, no security issues, that has been battle tested for decades, and on top of all that, provides some of the most fundamental and core functionality of your entire product line, and you're gonna throw it out and replace it with brand new software that hobbyists developed in a new programming language that has not yet been standardized because Rust is changing as a programming language in some cases week to week the c compiler changes constantly it's not it's not it's a moving target and those tools not only haven't been tested but the few ways they have been tested have been shown to not completely replace the the tools that they're meant to replace and you're just going to do that and ubuntu's doing that Ubuntu's plan is to do that right now. Uh, uh, they're doing that with some of the tools this coming October, which is <clears throat> uh, like a couple weeks away, uh, and then the rest of them at the next release uh, in, in the spring. But here's the great thing about all this. All the possible horror stories that you would guess would happen because of this Lo and behold, they are. Uh, people are starting to make bug reports of these new versions, these Rust uh, uh, U utils, as they are called, the replacement of GNU utils, and there, there's so many problems with them. Oh, for one, uh, CK Sum, one of the tools, is quote seventeen times slower than the GNU counterpart for some large files. Uh, quote: I benchmarked the UUtils version against the GNU two version, uh, GNU version of uh, CK Sum uh, using Hyperfine, and noticed that there was a significant difference in performance for some large files. Uh, and again, this is against the uh, the upcoming version of Ubuntu, Ubuntu 25.10, which ships in just a couple of weeks. And huge, huge performance problems, like 17 times. Now, this isn't for all cases, right? There are some cases where I bet you, I bet, and I haven't tested this, but I bet they might even perform as well or, or, or maybe even a tiny bit better than some of the GNU utils. But the problem is, is not so much that these are all being rewritten in Rust, because you can re you can write fast software in Rust just fine, just like you can in C or 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 so many other languages out there, Objective C or C plus plus. You can write fast software in darn near any programming language. The problem is. This is brand new code that's predominantly untested, that's replacing not just decades old battle tested software and decades old carefully refined and, uh, and performance increased software against so many edge cases and, and niche potential issues that can crop up on complex Unix systems. Because the GNU core utils, are possibly some of the most widely tested pieces of software on planet Earth. Like if you were to create a like a top 10 list of software that's just friggin' everywhere and has been so for decades and decades, built on programming languages and libraries that have existed for, for decades and decades. Well, GNU utils, uh, almost all of them, 
would make that top 10 list. And so it's completely reasonable to assume that whatever you're going to replace it with, even if you replaced it with something built in the same language, you could replace uh, those uh, uh, CK sum with an exact replacement that you built uh, from scratch in C or C++. It's probably going to be buggier and slower, almost certainly. Why? Because it hasn't been battle tested for decades. Holy heavens. This is engineering management 101, people. How the engineering and management team at Canonical could make an absolute boneheaded move like this is truly confusing to me because it doesn't matter what the language is. It matters that you're replacing battle tested software that no one's complaining about with untested software that has an unstable language underpinning it all of course you're going to have problems and you're going to shove it into your production system with literally weeks of testing are i'm sorry i hate to say this but are you retarded to all of the people making these decisions at ubuntu this is retarded it is a retarded thing to make and it, it, that's not the only one um sort the 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 classic core utility sort quote i found that the sort utility does not finish to the stage of generating output meaning it doesn't work on a large one line file this issue is not found in the gnu implementation it's just again this is scheduled for release in 25.10 what we have here is replacements to the absolute most core pieces of a Linux desktop. You know, the, the, the copy pasta of what you're referring to as Linux is in fact GNU forward slash Linux or writing to call it GNU plus Linux, right? This is what they're talking about when they're talking about the GNU part. It's these things, right? Not just the compiler, but all of the core utilities. The core utilities make up a significant portion of what makes a Linux system a Linux system. And the, the Ubuntu team has decided that they're going to literally chuck that baby out with the bathwater with no clear benefit to fix no problem that anyone's reporting in order to appease a whole bunch of religiously fevered rust zealots. That is exactly what's happening here. And it is the stupidest thing to watch. And it, when I predicted, and so many of you guys predicted this too. So I'm not like some lone prognosticator here. When 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 we when we all predicted when it was announced that Canonical was going to make these changes, when we said this isn't going to go well, guys, <laughs> if you replace the stuff that works with untested stuff, there's going to be problems. That's how engineering works, right? When we when I predicted that. Oh my gosh, the Rust Zealots came out of the woodworks. They were swearing. They're like, Lunduk is stupid. He probably doesn't even know what software is. He, he doesn't have a good reason to think all this. Oh, oh. And they just got all red faced and frothy at the mouth. They went nuts over it. And lo and behold, here we are weeks, a couple weeks from the Ubuntu version launching with a whole bunch of these utilities switched out. And what are we finding? the most cursory BFT, meaning basic functionality tests, are, are failing on the utilities that Ubuntu is planning to include rewritten in Rust. Now, it, again, it doesn't matter that it's written in Rust. Yes, I'm gonna make fun of it for being written in Rust because that's a religious decision, that's not an engineering decision. But, and that, by the way, that statement caused several people that uh, have, wear fox ears and, and uh, weird pink socks to start stabbing their screens. It's phenomenal. It's amazing how much power those words have. Um, it, it does not matter, though, that it's written in Rust. It matters that it's a bad engineering management decision. You don't do this, guys. Come on. Now, the problem that Canonical's really got now is they are within weeks of shipping the next version of Ubuntu. It is now going to take, there is no possible way, it is significant, simply not possible to effectively test and battle harden these UUtils, these Rust-based replacements in time for the release. It's not possible, not at all. It wasn't possible starting back in the spring and it's really not possible now. And some of the bugs that they find now 
I'm sure can be fixed. Maybe, right? At least, at least fixed in a, at, at, at a first pass. Well, who knows what sort of regressions will occur and everything else? Because again, this cannot be battle tested in time. There's simply not enough time. These these this pieces of software are just not tested enough. So what does Ubuntu do? Their, their two options are, well, really they have three options. One is they go ahead and they ship with these Rust-based utilities, but tell people, well, your Linux-based systems are now gonna be buggy as all get out, and we couldn't even begin to tell you how buggy they're gonna be, and it might be 17 times slower, just randomly with random edge case scenarios that we couldn't have even predicted because we didn't actually test the software we're giving you. That's one option, not a great option. The second option is they roll these utilities back and ship it with the GNU core utils until such time as they really feel like the Rust-based utilities are ready, which is pointless. So if I were them, I would just toss, chuck the Rust-based utilities out because they serve no value, um, at least no real value here. Now that is doable, however, They've been putting engineering resources into shipping this coming version of Ubuntu and testing it with the Rust-based utilities, which may not, and now they can't possibly test it enough, but that means that they haven't been testing with those versions of the GNU core utilities. And they may have been making changes to other parts of the systems to accommodate the Rust-based utilities. So now what sort of problems are gonna be exposed because they swap out the most core parts of the operating system at the very last minute? That's not a good idea. That's simply not a good idea. It's probably a better idea than shipping the Rust-based utilities, but it's not a good idea. The third idea is that they delay the release of Ubuntu in order to swap back in the C and C++ developed GNU core utils uh, and, and adequately test that prior to launch. If I were Ubuntu, I would cancel this October's release because uh, Ubuntu does releases, new releases every six months. And so they're, they're gonna do them in April and they do them again in October. This October release was never gonna be a long-term support release anyway. I would cancel the October release of Ubuntu completely. The Ubuntu 25.10, which is supposed to come out in a few weeks, cancel it, kill it. It's not gonna happen. The next release of Ubuntu will be in April. Switch back to the GNU core utilities so you have a stable, consistent system and time to adequately test and harden your system before that launch. That's how I would handle this. But that's a responsible engineering management approach to this. I don't think Canonical and Ubuntu will take a responsible approach. I think they will play this like a, a mushroom hallucinating cowboy and they will just ship the Rust utilities and it will just be absolute chaos. Uh, there's gonna be tons of issues like this. People will be having problems all over the place. That's what's gonna happen. That's what's gonna happen. And it is hilarious to watch it happen it is fascinating to be completely proven right, like so many of you were, because we predicted all of this. And this is just the beginning, right? Even if they manage to come in and fix these issues and the other ones that are getting reported at right now, these are just the funniest ones. Um, even if they manage to do that in a way where there's not significant regression problems and significant other bugs that are created, the number of other uh, edge use cases that they have not accounted for and the sheer amount of functionality that has not yet been developed for these Rust-based replacements that they are they are fully aware of. There's, they have a chart where over half of the Rust-based base replacements don't even account for 50, 60% of the functionality of the GNU stuff that they're supposed to be replacing. So the number of breakages in bash scripts and desktop software that relies on these tools is gonna be astronomical. There's no way to predict how extensive they're going to be other than they're obviously going to be extensive problems. Um, thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers for helping to make all of this coverage possible. Go to lunduke.com where you can read and listen and watch for free everything from the Lunduke Journal. And of course, you can subscribe uh, right there 
on Locals, Substack, X, YouTube, Patreon, via Bitcoin or Itch. There's so many ways that you can subscribe to the Lunduke Journal and get different sorts of, of perks for them. Uh, in fact, there's new perks coming right now where you, there's currently, if you subscribe to the Lunduke Journal via Locals or Substack, you can get uh, 12 DRM-free PDF eBooks. Uh, you get some video games for Linux and DOS, like the Linux Tycoon games. You get access to the Lunduke Journal forum, lifetime subscription, subscribers uh, can get, uh, and we're just implementing this just now, just this week. So I'm letting you know all about this. We just added this. Uh, the Lunduke Journal will follow you on X, which is really handy. Beyond just me following, my account following you on X, that means it's easier to interact with the Lunduke Journal on X because it, there's so much noise. I, I get so many comments and replies and quote tweets and everything all day long that if I'm following your accounts, that means that your comments go right to the top and I get to see all the things that you guys are saying. It makes it much easier for us to interact. So uh, the Lunduke Journal will follow your accounts and uh, in the coming days, uh, sometime later this week, all of the future shows from the Lunduke Journal will end on a, on a big slide of all of, a, of a, the special thanks to lifetime subscribers to the Lunduke Journal. Um, if you are currently a lifetime subscriber or become one, uh, you can email me. Uh, I'm just brian at lunduke.com uh, with the subject line lifetime perk uh, and include those details, uh, what your X account is and what your name is that you'd like to be uh, <laughs> credited as in that little thank you slide that we're going to be including. Um, uh, I'm only going to do it for people who ask for it, though. So if you want to remain anonymous and you're a little worried that uh, your, empl <laughs> your employer or, or some random people on on Mastodon or the internet are going to get mad at you for, for supporting the Lunduke Journal, we can leave your name off. Or you can come up with an anonymous handle. However you want to handle it's totally fine. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes, masters and slaves, <laughs> uh, across the internet, I do declare, oh, end broadcast.